Last Sunday I uploaded a video which had a vote in the comments section, allowing you to decide the future of our next save on this channel. It's now time for me to announce the winner and become a little bit more appropriately dressed for the occasion. Run the intro. So here you have the winner of the vote, it is Build a Nation in Finland with TPS. And for anyone who's not familiar with our association with TPS, is I live in Finland. One of the reasons why I have the shirt, I guess, with my wife's finish. And we had a save in the last FM with TPS very, very late into the FM cycle. So we didn't have enough time to actually complete the Build a Nation. And I did promise that at some point in this FM we will come back. And it seems to happen sooner rather than later. And I'm all for it. One thing I wanted this time around was to have a database to get the lower divisions such as the Kakkonen and Kolmanen which is like division 3 and 4. We don't have all of them but we do have the Kakkonen which is the third division. One below where we start so so there is a league extra that we didn't have last time so we can actually loan players out to that division. And over in the last edition of this type of save we did have a few players who went to the third division but for obvious reasons it wasn't playable back then. But now they get to actually have some stats and develop properly. Look at that lovely kit. I need to get one of these next season. And we have good training facilities, average youth facilities. So we should expect to get okay recruitment year in, year out. In what was a very tight year in the Ukonen, TPS did finish second. Very, very close to Kortepe, who actually won the division and was automatically promoted to the Vikas Liga, which is the top division for anyone who doesn't know that. Uh, so basically what happened is then 2nd, 3rd and 4th place went into a playoff and the winner of the overall playoffs will go against the losers playoff from the top division. TPS did actually get to the final, however in the final they lost to FC Lahti who kept their place in the Vikas Liga meaning that TPS once again had another season in the Ukonen. And for the manager profile it's kind of how I always tend to go with, the tactical style is definitely not correct. but. I like to be more of the possession orientated coach, not necessarily going to use the possession in our tactics, but I like to be the, tech, uh, the tactical, technical, mental kind of coach in the team. And a lot of my attributes do go over to the man management side, uh, the, the mental attributes, which is why you can see a very good right side in comparison to the left. And we do have a continental A license and professional footballer of a national level. So we're not exactly maxed out. But we do have a little bit of room with at least one more jump in the coaching license to go to the pro which i think you need if you want to manage in european competitions and to show the divisions quickly we have the top division the vikas liga we have ourselves here in the ukonen which is the second division and then we have the kakkonen also which breaks into three groups which is uh, locker a group a group b which we have two affiliates uh, and group c so this is the team that we inherit at the start of the game. A lot of the players are pretty much the same as last year. Some little changes in positions and star ratings and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to sort of dive further into that as we progress on over the season. You can see there's a few players in here who are on trial. Just trying to fill in some of them gaps where we need a little bit of extra depth or potentially someone that's good enough to take on the role as like the first choice option. So goalkeeping wise we've got Koppinen at the top and Arti Martinen who is the second choice. We have two very good prospects here. It's it's almost a battle between them who can progress better. Right back, last year we had Posa who was the main right back. He was a similar starting style rating, but he had much more potential. And this year he also seems much more of a winger than he does a right back. And for anyone who remembers last year, we had a different picture for Posa, but I had a look at the squad and the people who didn't have faces and I wanted to try and have a little bit more of a an accurate representation. So he's had a little change. This looks a little bit more like him. Not exactly the same, but you get the point. So this year, with Posa not being an actual right back, we're going to put Kinnanen on that side. Last year he played on the left for us, but he's going to be our number one right back with Posa trying to understand the role and develop to become a better right back and take over the mantle from Kinnanen. At left back, we have Yunus Sunman, who 
again last year i'm going to mention last year a lot so i'm sorry again but he didn't really get a sniff last year he wasn't that great he looks a little bit better this year so and with kinnanen being on the right he's got much more of an opportunity to play and we brought in a guy called ture mantunen who's going to be a backup left back who has some decent potential our coach report says that he's got a chance of being a vikas league player in the future plus he's like 22 years old so he's about the same age as someone we're going to sort of play between them both, see who does better, like most positions this year. And we'll find out who's going to be the starting right back come like midpoint of the season. Who's going to be like the number one. Centre backs, we've got Taimi and Holmer. And then we on the left side, we have Samba Benga. And this time we've got Yunus Lakamaki, who we kind of played left back, I think, last time. Um, he just, as much as he wants to play left back, he doesn't look like a left back to me. I mean, he's not that great going forward, which is kind of what I want from my wing backs. He's 5'11", so he's not there with the with the height. I'm not a big fan of under six foot defenders, but it's fine. We'll get through that. His jumping reach can get worked on, and hopefully he'll do a solid job for us. I mean, after all, if he doesn't work out, we can just ship him off or play him left back. Holding midfield is the ball winning midfielder. Anthony Annan is the only player that we've got actually useful at that role so we do, do need to find a backup for rotation and whether he gets injured or something someone who can do that or we can alternatively push more aggressive and have someone in the hole up here instead and the right side of center midfield we've got Santori Pohjalainen and Jesper Carlsen two players who are very similar and very similar in potential also both have a lot of room to grow Santori is two years younger so we're going to give him the start see if we can try and really push him I think we kind of did that the last time also and on the left side we've decided to move Ranton in here because out in the last episode uh, in the last series we had Ranton in as a right winger but he actually looks like a decent Mazala stats wise or attributes wise so we're going to try and really push him for that because I want to play him a lot it seems like a decent player he never let us down last time and we also, for the eagle-eyed viewers, we have brought in another player to fill in that gap called Artu Latikainen, who is probably better off as a deep line playmaker, but he's got okay physicals to do the Mazala job as like a backup. It was a bit of a panic. We couldn't really find anyone. I mean, we still have time, but I think he's on some like very small contract. Like that's not bad at all. Plus, we only have like. 260 euros or something a week that we can give so not many people's coming in for that on a part-time contract on the left hand side we have Kasper Hamalainen and Oli Jakunen who's going to be the backup the right side Demba Savage and Harry Seb and up top we have Simo Royha and Albion Muzaki and then we also have probably one of the big players from the last version of this save Oli Pekapayala who has been absolutely butchered in terms of potential ability he still has a lot of the same pros, but I don't like the look of this. And the fact that I actually have a pretty decent head of youth development who's given me the coaching reports. I just don't I just don't think that we're going to be able to do much about his progression. Romeo Jozak, 16 ability, 17 potential. He knows what he's talking about. And if he says Pyla is not going to be good enough, I'm afraid Pyla is not going to be good enough. So he's not going to get the major push he did last time. One thing which I did do was flirt around with the idea of having the add players to playable teams thing because I think maybe for the divisions below, I don't know how well their squads are going to be kitted out. Like you can see kind of here that there's not so many people. It's not really a full team. There's going to be a handful of players who are playable and actual real players. When we have the players added, like the regens for the reserves and under 20s, we had a couple of players who looked half decent and to be honest it's it didn't feel authentic enough tactic wise for this first season it's pretty much a basic formation very similar to the one that i had at deportivo if i remember rightly the main difference that we've got really here in comparison to the deportivo tactic is we have central defenders instead of ball playing defenders because they just don't have the ability to play as well as the ones that we had over there and i think the box to box is now a mazala aside from that I think the left side sometimes had an inverted winger, but inside forward it's kind of similar. It's a little bit more offensive. And because we're predicted to be at the top of this uh, first season and get promoted at first time of asking, then we should run with a little bit more of an aggressive formation. And with the finances in the bin, it's not like we can do too much to start off with the save financial-wise. We can't really get 
we can't obviously be asking for youth recruitment to be improved and all that kind of stuff. We can't really go professional yet. Hopefully, we get to go professional by the end of the season if we get promoted. I think something that happened last time is I kind of jumped the gun and offered contracts out before we officially changed because I had a board meeting. We They rejected it. Then one week later, said, do you want to go professional? So... I want to kind of have that in the back of my mind so we can go professional with contracts as quick as possible. So a lot of our budgeting will be on contracts for the first two, three seasons just to stabilise the ship and really sort of work with what we've got and maybe try and get a few bargain signings. So I'm going to finish the episode up here. This has been kind of like a team preview video, meaning that next episode we'll start to get through the season and I'll show you exactly how we get on in our first campaign of the Swarman Cup. As it pretty much finishes before the season starts or just as the season starts, like a few games or something like that. But let me know in the comments down below which player you're most excited seeing for us this season. Have a great day and I'm out.